welcome to another Fighting Fantasy uh, Friday. I forgot what day is. Um, yeah, so back to playing some game books. Um, got a few more. Uh, got, got Citadel Chaos, uh, Death Trap Dungeon, Vault, Blood Bones it comes with. Might do that later on. Uh, and City of Thieves. Uh, just bought those this week. Uh, which Forest of Doom I don't own because I own that, owned that as a standalone, so we've already played that last month. Uh, but this month we are, and our House Hell I own as a standalone as well because we played that in Halloween uh, month last year. Uh, so, really, out of these, it's just Trial of Champions, Lizard King, and Snow Witch. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go, uh, we sort of jumped ahead to Game Book 3 last month, but we're going to go back to Game Book 2. I thought and play uh, Citadel Chaos. So, yeah, let's uh, crack on, shall we? Uh, update is available. All right, let's update that then. So, any free mega update? Uh, let's play. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah, uh, Citadel Chaos game book. We don't need it. We're doing. Uh, play Citadel Chaos exactly how. St oh, I can't go back. Uh, I think so. Let's ro anyway, let's roll some stats. Let's wow, that's poor. Okay, fine. We are not going to do well in this one. Wow. We are going to die. Oh, good. I'm a lucky, weak. Rubbish at fighting. Now we're just roll for magic. Not even good at magic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's ESP. Yeah, I'll take one. I think one. Uh, is there any others? Oh, there is. Uh, I can't remember what I've taken now. Uh. Does it tell me what I've taken? Uh, I can't remember what I've taken. <laughs> when I click on uh, uh, hang on. Uh, I guess we store stamina. Is that it? Can we just take as many as we want? What is going on? Uh, He's 13 scrolls. Uh, which copy? I don't, know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, it's not skill. Uh, I don't know. Do Done yet? Reach a copy. Take one. How much? There we go. I don't know what I've taken now, so this is going to be horrendous. Oh dear. Deary me. Um, uh, unlike most friends, uh, without any provisions. Normally, provisions may be consumed at any time, screen combat. Store, but as a budding wizard, instead you have access to a restore stamina spell scroll. So, restore. Brilliant. This should have been before the magic. Uh -huh, hang on. I know you. Okay. All right. The lawful good folk of the Vale of Willow have lived for some eight years in awe and fear of the demi sorcerer Balfus Dyer. In awe since his power is truly awesome, and in fear ever since the word leaked from his domain that his ambition, plans, of conquest were to commence with the Vale itself. A faithful half-elf sent on a spy mission to the Black Tower came galloping back from the Vale three days ago with a frantic warning. From within the caverns of Kragon Rock, Balfus Dyer has recruited an army of Chaotics and was preparing them to attack the Vale within the week. The good King Salomon was a man of action. Messengers were sent throughout the Vale that the day to prepare that uh, that day to prepare defences to summon folk into action. 
Riders had also been sent to the Great Forest of Yore to warn the half-elves who lived there to make an appeal for an allied forces. King Salomon was also a wise man. He knew that the news would inevitably reach the Grand Wizard of Yore, a sorcerer of great power who lived deep within the forest. The wizard was old and could not last through the battle of this magnitude, but he had schooled a number of young musicians, perhaps one of his students in the magic arts, with courage and ambition would aid the king and his subjects. I hope he doesn't mean me, because I'm a rubbish wizard, apparently. Uh, you are a star pupil. Oh dear. You are a star pupil of the Grand Wizard of Yore. He has been a difficult master, and your impatience has often gotten the better of you. Perhaps a little too headstrong, you left immediately for Salomon's court. The king welcomed you enthusiastically and explained his plan. The battle would be avoided without bloodshed if Balthus were to be assassinated before his army could be amassed. The mission ahead of you is extremely perilous. Balthus Dyer is surrounded in his citadel by a multitude of appalling creatures. Although magic is your strongest weapon, there are times you must rely on your sword to survive. King Salomon has briefed you on the mission and has warned you of the dangers that lie ahead. One way through the citadel is the best for you to take. If you discover it, you'll be successful with a minimum of personal risk. It may take you several trips to find this route. You leave the Vale of Willow and begin the long hike to the Black Tower. At the foot of the Great Hill of Crag and Rock, you see the outline against the dark sky. Now turn over. Oh, just did. Wow, okay. So their hopes lie with me but I am a rubbish wizard. Okay. Okay. Can, we, can we plan this in? Uh, options. Uh, player. Ooh, I can change your portrait. If I'm going to be a wizard. I don't know. I don't think this means anything. But more of a priest, isn't it? I'm going to leave it at that because that looks like a rubbish wizard. Uh, visual retro mode? Oh, no, what retro mode? And cancel. Delete classic images. What? How do we. Retro, I kind of like it. Retro, uh, <laughs> oh no, I deleted classic images. But how do we get okay? So we... I'm just gonna leave it like this. I thought we could, I thought we could. Uh... Put it into some sort of. Oh, change the music. Ah, I didn't know. Yeah, that's interesting. It's different. Falling forest. It's going dungeon delve. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, right. That's better, isn't it? It's a bit more than being in a tavern. Okay, so. The sun sets. As twilight turns to d darkness, you start to climb up the hill towards that forbidden shape silhouetted against the night sky. The citadel is less than an hour's climb. Some distance from its walls, you stop to rest, gazing up at the fortress. A sense of dreadful foreboding fills you like a fearful specter from which there is no escape. The hairs on your neck prickle as you look towards it. You brush your fears aside with a grim resolve, march onwards towards the main gate, where you know guards will be waiting. You consider your options. You have already thought about claiming to be a herbalist. Some come to treat a guard with a fever. You could pose as a trader or an artisan, perhaps a carpenter. You could even be a nomad seeking shelter for the night. Definitely going to be a herbalist, I think. As you ponder the possibilities, 
and the yarns you might be out you, you may have to spin to the guards you reach the main trail leading to the gates two lanterns burn either side of a portcullis you hear muffled gruntings as you approach two misshapen creatures step forward on the left stands an ugly creature with the head of a dog and the body of a great ape flexing its powerful arms its opposite number is indeed its opposite with the head of an ape and the body of a large dog this latter guard approaches you on all fours. It stops some meters in front of you, raises itself on its hind legs, and addresses you. Which story will you opt for? Well, um, um, which story shall we opt for? Uh, herbalist. The ape dog asks to see your herbs. Luckily, you grabbed a few handfuls of weeds on your way to show them. Cocking its head to one side, the creature eyes you suspiciously. It asks for the name of the guard you come to treat. Something you hadn't planned on, I had not, I have to admit. You quickly think of a name to bluff the creature. Uh, can you try Blag? I kind of want to do Blag, because I'm blagging my way in. So we got Kildrog, Pincus, and Blag. Oh, let's go for Blag. The creature looks at you as if the name sounds familiar, but they can't quite place it. You quickly add that he's on the first floor watch. They shrug and eventually decide that you must be telling the truth. Yay, you blag my way in with blag. The ape dog summons the gatekeeper, who eventually appears to let you in. I should just point out that yes, I've played this game a few times back in the day, and I've played it in recent times, but honestly, it's one of those ones I can never remember, so it's always a nice surprise when I play it. It's not like Forest of Doom where I'd played it so much, it's just ingrained in. So there'll be things I will remember, of course, but like that, I couldn't remember which name to pick. So that wasn't me doing it from memory. That was a lucky guess. Okay, just so I was listening out, there's someone at my door. But they're posting stuff through, so you don't need to know that. Let's carry on. You walk forward in a spacious open courtyard surrounded by large walls. Various lights are burning and groups of figures are shuffling in the darkness. In the centre of the courtyard is a large monument of some kind, perhaps a fountain. Looking across the yard you see what happened, see what appears to be the main tower. So quickly got my notes here. So I'm gonna flag my way in. Which will take me to 251. Yeah, because I feel we're not doing this first time. I'm going to die. If you creep towards the tower, turn to 222. That's 222 tower. Uh, boldly across the courtyard. Tiptoe through the shadows towards one of the groups. Don't... Right, so in the centre of the courtyard is a large monument of some kind, perhaps a fountain, so... Across the yard, see what appears to be the main entrance of the tower. So I don't know. Uh, I guess if I'm in here legitimately, I can just boldly walk across. But let's have a sneak around first, get the lay of the land. Cautiously creeping well out of sight, you creep. Uh, so I'm going to creep. So I know what I've done. Three, two, one. Uh, cautiously you keeping well out of sight, you creep through the darkness around the edge of the courtyard there are two groups of creatures in front of you to the right you can see two human like figures talking under the torch fastened to the wall to the left a group of four creatures of various sizes sitting around the fire eating they got a fire this music's not helping actually it's making me feel quite anxious um A motley crew sit around the fire. A wartly faced orc is handing out scraggy chunks of half cooked meat to the others. A snarling dwarf with green skin is complaining about the size of his piece. Ah, yes. While two scruffy goblins, a man and a woman, are cuddling each other. They giggle and laugh, and every so often she slaps his ugly face, causing more merriment. As you approach, they stop and turn to look at you with an unwelcoming faces. They sneer as you, at your neat appearance and the female goblin whispers some comment to her companion. In front of the dwarf, you can see an open box. You can just make out a few rolled up pizzas of parchment within it. 
How will you respond to their cold reception? If you want to sit down, I'm just going to sit down. They're taken back by your austerity, audacity. Uh, rather than waiting for you for them to talk, you act aggressively and demand to know how to get into the citadel. They point to the main entrance, obviously a little bewildered by your confident manner, and whisper amongst themselves. The orc tells you you will need the password. Shkimata. Yes, here we go. That's good. Get in. You ask about the contents of the box, whereupon they get agitated. How you wish to proceed? Wish to push them for more information about the box. And towards the two men earlier. Uh, or Black Tower is two four five. Uh, so we got the password to go to this. We can go straight to the tower. I'm intrigued by this box. The group becomes suspicious as you press for information. The dwarf springs to his feet, branching the wooden clump, while the goblins orc grab their swords, glare at you. Uh, oh, I didn't want to get into combat this soon. Um, what are my stats for combat? I don't think they're very good, are they? Skill 7. Lux. Lux good, though. Uh, what spells did I take? <laughs> I got an illusion spell. So let's see if I can do this. Concentrate uh, the magic words of the spell and give yourself the appearance of a giant scorpion. The dwarf and goblin step in to stop in the tracks, but all behaves as nothing happened. The other two, you, the other two, see you sitting, sting the orc with your tail, but the orc does not flinch and calls the other two to move on. Seeing that you've done no damage, they shake their heads and look at you again. The orc tries to grab you. Uh, okay. All right. Let's have a fight then. Uh, I'll fight that's so one. Clicking around. Ooh. some less monsters you must face the goblin oh it's gonna be did i want to get into this much of combat <laughs> this this close quick in the game probably not all right the orc's gonna to be tough isn't he okay cool ah uh, the orc's not too bad a bit better than me like if that happens ouch Okay, we don't want that to happen again. Uh, all that. Come on. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, three more combats to go. Two more. Hopefully the others will run away once I've got these. Yeah, one more and the orc's dead. That's the one I was worried about, and we've done him. Excellent. Wasted a spell. Afraid of the commotion that your battle may have attracted uh, attention, you peer into the darkness, nothing seems to have happened. Going through the pockets of creatures, you find eight pieces of gold. I don't need to write this down because it will do it all to my thing. A copper coloured key and a jar of dark creamy ointment. Turn to the box, you see pieces of parchment which have been, which are inscribed with runes. Your heart leaps, you realise these spells are spell scrolls which you already know and are very valuable. Looking at them more closely, you can identify spells or creature copy and enhance strength. You take them with you. Uh, Cheryl, I'm going to put a bookmark in here because why not? Doing alright. <laughs> this is a very hard game and I'm worried. I should stroll towards the citadel and get this adventure going, but I can't help but be curious. And you know what curious did. Uh, here we go. Two men are dirty and unkempt. As you approach, they hear, you can hear them arguing loudly about a price of a dagger. The taller of the two men is obviously trying to sell the dagger to the other. He argues that the dagger is enchanted, worth more than the other is willing to pay for it. As you step closer, he grabs you by the arm, asks for your opinion on the price of the weapon. Uh, Tell the price is worth five gold. If you believe it's worth eight gold, if you tell them 
Oh. Should we just go down the middle? Uh -huh. Go down the middle. The man argues and persuades the short man as a fair price. The short man mumbles and curses, offering six, seven, and uh, then seven gold pieces, but the price is fixed eight. If you have eight gold pieces, you can buy the dagger yourself. Or you can tempt to get. If you do not wish to purchase the dagger, the short man uh, eventually argues the price, but says, buys the dagger and leaves. If you remain to talk to the tall man, I don't know how much gold I got. How much gold do we get? Eight. Alright, buy it. The dagger is indeed a work of art and was undoubtedly worth a fair price. The blade is made of shiny metal, a hilt is particularly green leather inlaid with stones. You read the inscription tells you it is an enchanting throwing dagger and never misses. In future combat, you may use this dagger to throw at an opponent. It will automatically inflict two stamina uh, points worth of damage without need to roll for attack strength, but you may only use it once if you put the dagger into your belt and set off towards the citadel. Yay, well that was good. And this, I think, is meant to be the cover, which you see here, I guess, the spirit sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, we've done all that, and we're now 245 citadel in. Make a note of that. Down. You set off towards the citadel, a low, the night air is calm, you hear a faint whistling which rapidly gets louder and louder until a strong gust of wind suddenly hits you with a force that you can barely move against. You shield your eyes until a blast retreats slightly and you open. And as you open them, you see a ghostly female face inside what appears to be a living whirlwind. She mouths words to you which you cannot make out, but for some seconds after she has finished talking, the message reaches you. She seems to find your appearance offensive and is challenging you with words of abuse. You grab your sword, and but she laughs. If you ignore her and continue walking, if you stop to talk to her... Wow. Okay. Um, i put another bookmark here. Yeah, a two, four, five. Uh, or we can try it. Let's stop and talk to her, see what see what she's got going on. Okay, so we can test my luck. I'm quite lucky, so that's something. You try a simple ploy to get rid of her, hoping she is not too intelligent. Looking in the shadows, you claim to see another similar creature. She claims you were mistaken, but you are so convinced she snips off to invest investigate, allowing you to rush to the citadel entrance. Fine, that'll do. Got rid of her. In front of you is a large wooden door that is firmly locked. You may either knock three times for the guard or use a strength spell to open it. Knock and wait for the guard, we've got the password. The door opens and a large brutish creature steps out. It has a sharp horn in the middle of its forehead and its skin appears to be armour plated. It grunts and asks you what you want and demands the password before you let it in, before letting you in. Do you know the password? I do. Do you remember the password? If you think it is Schimita, I do. The creature grunts and approves and lets you in. 177. You are in a narrow hallway. This continues for several meters and ends in a doorway. Halfway along the passage, you can see an archway with some steps lead downwards. Uh, so we're in. So halfway along the passage, you see an archway and the steps leading downwards. Ends in a narrow doorway. So, uh, 177, that would be our door. Do you think it's too soon to go down? Straight forward through the door or going down? Um, bookmark. Let's go down. You follow the stairs down in the area stagment. At the foot of the stairs is a door. Will you try the door or you go back up? So we can go back up here. So I feel we should try this door. The door is locked. You may try and break it down by charging with your shoulder or you may cast a strength spell yourself. Uh, try charging the door. Let's try charging it. As you hit the door, the wood cracks a little, but it does not give. Uh, you give it. You try again, and this time the wood splits down the middle. You break through and enter the room behind it. Well, 
thing is, I didn't want to use a spell here. I'll probably need that strength spell elsewhere. So we done it. Hello. You now stand in a large round room. It is lit by a single torch fixed into one wall. There is no furniture in the room save for a rough wooden table and a chair in the centre. Hovering above the table, fast asleep, is a very small man dressed in a green shirt and pantaloons. He cannot be more than a metre tall and you cannot believe he is still asleep after your noisy entrance. You hear a creak and turn round to your right in time to see a small catapult fire a missile of some sort straight at you. It is going to hit you unless you use a shielding spell. Oh, I don't have a shielding spell, so it's going to hit me. You duck, but cannot avoid the full impact of the missile. It hits you in the forehead and splatters all over your face. You brace yourself, wait for perhaps an uh, acidic reaction to take place, but it's a mushy liquid, merely drips off your face to the ground. Curiously, you test it. Cautiously, you test it, first with your finger, then with your tongue. You've been hit by a ripe tomato. You turn to face the sleeping figure who is beginning to stir. Cautiously, you approach the little man as you get close. A single eye opens and looks you straight in the face. A wide grin spreads across the creature's ears and disappears. Good morning to ya, says a chirpy little voice behind you. You swivel around and see him standing there, still grinning. I'm Osimus the Leprechaun. Oh, that should be an Irish accent, shouldn't it? I'm not doing that. He chuckles and holds his hands out to you, seeming friendly enough. Will you shake his hand and try and uh, befriend him? Yeah, why not? Damn. You grasp his hand and introduce yourself and cry out as as the nerves down your arm go numb. Osimus bursts out laughing. You lose one skill point. Oh, I don't have enough skill points to lose. As you're using your sword arm, you become angry, but the little man continues to shake your hand and laugh. A laugh comes from behind you and look round to see him floating near, grinning. I think he's mischievous more than evil. But you are still shaking his hand in front of you. Or are you? In fact, you realise you are frankly shaking hands with a stuffed dummy which is flopping around at the end of your arm as you shake it. You throw it to the ground, but it is stuck to your hand. The situation is ludicrous and you become very angry. Just a little joke, says the leprechaun, who snaps his fingers. Dummy disappears. Now what can I do for you? Were you asking for the way onwards? Yeah. Oh, I shouldn't go this way, says Seamus. They are not pleasant parts. These three doors are the only way onward. Two of them are very dangerous, the other is very smelly. Okay, on the opposite side of the room are three doors, one with a brass handle, one with a copper handle, and one has a brass bronze handle. Oh, that's asking for a bit of advice. Which one would I take? Let's see. I would take one, I would take the one, two doors to the left of the copper one. Oh, goodness. So, uh, we have brass, copper, bronze. I would take one, two doors, one, I would take the one, two doors to the left of the copper one. Brass, copper, bronze. Take the one, two doors to the left of the copper hand. I, I, I'm assuming the doors in his mind are infinite. So if you go left, you go back to the other side. So if I went two doors to the left of the copper one, two, that would be bronze. Nor the door to the right of the bronze handled one. So the, to the right of the bronze handled one, that would be brass. So we're going bronze. You open the door and step into another room. So we've taken bronze. Put bronze up here. Three, five, four, and that is bronze. Let's see if I'm going to be right. Glad to have left you annoying little creature behind. Okay, right. We are getting on to half hour, so I think we're going to continue with this next week. Uh, in the meantime, if you've got any advice about this game, or if you think I've gone wrong so far <laughs> with this door, let me know in the comments. Uh, but that will be it for this this week, and we can pick it up here uh, with the intense flash, light flash. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, 
I hope you enjoyed this. Please, yeah, leave some comments about if you've played this game before, if you have. What are your thoughts on this particular book? Uh, any advice you can give for the way ahead? Yep, let me know in the comments. So until next time, guys, please take care. Thank you.